So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what we've been doing, and I will try to point out to some of the leads and kind of key people that are behind most of these slides. So um, we will soon, tomorrow afternoon, be in this picture, I hope. Uh, I hope it looks like that. So that's where we'll be going tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. And what I'm going to try to cover in 10 minutes is just briefly our what WPT uh, task overview and champions. We're not task leaders anymore, we're champions. Um, brief synopsis of milestones and deliverables. And then just a couple highlights. These are going to be very much almost a kind of highlights of different kinds of things we're doing. It's not going to be inclusive or comprehensive, but it's just more kind of vignettes of meta synthesis. And then I uh, will give some uh, stories from the field of the exemplars and um, some of the, you probably will be asked by at least four people to fill out a questionnaire in the next uh, 48 hours. So I'm just giving you early warning that that's all meaningful and please do that. And uh, just touch on reporting, which we'll be hearing about a lot through the course of the next couple of days. So the good news is we're all on target with our milestones and deliverables. So that's really the takeaway message. And uh, meta analysis is in the interesting uh, situation of having actually done everything. Um, but they're still here. So they're very deeply engaged. And actually, there's a lot of um, work going on between some of the insights and findings from meta-analysis that is flowing into the synthesis. And the exemplars are continuing to sort of learn from meta and feed into meta. So it's actually a very dynamic process. There are several PhD students that are very live and active in that. So even though they formally finished their deliverable, it's quite nice that they're very engaged in terms of content and research. So that's a nice. Um, contribute to our energy of offers and its intentions. The exemplars cover 12 different exemplars on a huge range of scale from uh, global down to the inner fourth. And um, the ones in blue are the description of study design. And if you want to kind of get an update quickly on exemplars, that's probably a really nice document for doing it. It was from last February, but it still gives you an overview. And as part of our exemplars interim <coughs> report, we, each exemplar uh, group, made a lovely PowerPoint that's supposed to be an outward-facing kind of document, as well as meeting our reporting goal, and then we had sort of a series of internal reflection notes. And I think that PowerPoint, whereas Archie is in the process of being on the web, and Archie's kind of making it a little bit more dynamic, it really came out of a last, our meeting in Dublin, where our advisors, you know, you want to go to the website and have a quick snapshot of what's going on in these various places and lead into it. And actually, this is all going to be flowing into the aqua element as well. Um, so that's been done. And right now, we're working on um, the one for January, which will kind of nicely uh, fit with our reporting processes in terms of where we're going. And we'll have a final conference in a year from now, which also will fit with our final reporting. So this is interesting, because we'll have our report, our final aquas conference in February, which will fit very well with those conferences Mark was just telling you about in September through November in terms of big messages and big moves, gaps, or synergies that we want to take further as we kind of uh, evolve out of offers into APLA. So this is um, the one that has a lot of focus uh, right now. And you'll be seeing uh, <coughs> more from Jean Biev, who's sitting, she was there. There she is. Um, so they, they have a daunting looking uh, suite of milestones and deliverables. But I actually now understand it for the first time. Um, so they are right now, they've, uh, you've heard about Blueprint and they've had the second Blueprint is on the web and the third one is in progress. She will explain more about decision trees um, through the course of the week and that was actually quite exciting. There was a very nice meeting a couple weeks ago with Openness because they're doing decision trees as well and I'll touch on that <coughs> in a minute. Um, and the decision guidance that's coming out of that is already road, uh, roadmapped to flow into Opla. So there's a lot more connectivity going across these um, elements than you might first realize. And um, so these are things that will be happening April 2017, so a little far from the radar, but they'll actually flow well after these suite of conferences we were just talking about. And so these are just a couple of vignettes. So, um, this is an example of, I think I'd like to have it really big on my wall or have it made into a rug. Um, so this is the work of uh, Stefan Schmidt, who is, where is Stefan? Right there, and others. And uh, he sent me some elaborate text underneath, but I've shortened it to how does information supply that's feeding into all these ecosystem <coughs> databases kind of go into the database mixer and then pop out and inform policy instruments. 
So these are lots of real numbers, real words, real things that mean. Uh, so I encourage you to talk to Stefan more. And I'm very excited to see what's going on right here. But, uh, this is example. So this is an example also we were talking earlier about visualization of ecosystem services and translation of ecosystem services. So this has a visual wow, but then it needs the next step for someone to demystify it to uh, someone on the ground that might not go beyond that, but it's still pretty neat. Uh, on a different level, I mentioned uh, the um, synthesis to the work that they've been doing on the blueprint, which is now on the cloud, and they're kind of creating the next iteration that leads into the lessons learned in a more structured, formal way. <coughs> Thanks to John Biab for that. And John Biab and James as well are also leading on another aspect of the guidance and decision. Now, at this meeting with the openness, there were so many decision trees going on at once. Literally, in, in the boardroom where we were, but there were decision trees coming in through the conference uh, phone. So we, we now call them decision forest. And uh, the trick is to see the forest for the trees. So um, it's a metaphor, but I think it's a good one. So as you can see, there's already things going on. Openness opera and the, the usual players. And these are just, that's a Bayesian belief network. That's some other kind of network. So there's a lot of energy going on to how do you make decisions in a structured way that is replicable across and within the exemplars and other aspects of the various projects. So uh, the next little bit are tiny vignettes from the field. Um, so these are illustrative rather than descriptive, but uh, they just give you a sense of the type of activities and energies and modes of uh, communicating, gathering information, and sharing information that we're doing in our um, different exemplars. So this is the wine exemplar. And the, the sad news, you have to go through all of this to get to that. Uh, but, um, so there's a lot of thought. I like this one because it's quite interesting on how you identify your system services. What are the main um, LCA? I uh, forgot what that means. And tell me. Yes, and then you have to quantify it, get back up to stakeholders, see if they like what you said. To see if the wine is any good. So, um, but, but that's basically, there's a lot of interesting thinking of process and methods that have to be captured and communicated. So that was one of the fun ones. On a slightly simpler level, they translated some of these to posters presenting at various conferences. So this is just a, a kind of a proxy slide for all the different posters and talks and conferences that we're going to. And one of the things that we'll be doing, and I think our reporting will help, is you know, how many conferences have gone to? How many papers have we written? How many PhD students do we have? How many, not just numbers, but the, the knowledge. Uh, master students, we have quite a group of master students doing things. So these will be coming through our reporting in a really nice way. You, uh, Scotland has ESCOM, which we've already heard about from Mark. One of the more case space or play space projects is dealing with coastal managed realignment. Do you get rid of a seawall and make a biodiversity-friendly wetland out of it. This is actually what people want. The government might want it, but the local people might not, or it might be the other way around. So Anya and Astrid, where are you? Right there. <coughs> they have been uh, running a whole series of very innovative uh, workshops within one of the main towns, and it's actually where um, one of the uh, largest petrochemical factories is in Europe. And so it's quite a, a challenging area in terms of the economic picture and what to do with these different options. And they mainly are focusing on socio-cultural evaluation and the sort of visualization of paths and scenarios to help people understand what options are. And this has also been quite nice because it's involved London University, Dublin, a um, few other universities. So it's actually a really nice project that's turned out to be kind of a mix of WP2, 3, and 4, I believe. So it's quite nice for that. And they've, there's, they've got two more workshops to go and basically a kind of workshop choice experiment and then they'll be analyzing it in the um, winter and so seeing what else needs this summer. So that's kind of a fun way dealing with uh, seagrasses and as we all now know that seagrasses um, layer in the sediments and basically there's a lot of carbon stored in the sediments below the living part of the seagrass and how much of that carbon is captured and stored in that and that's the work that Nuria has been working on. Where's Nuria? There she is. So she's the queen of seagrasses over there. And what's interesting is, uh, this is from memory, but basically the amount of uh, carbon that's been stored appears to be going up. 
and it appears that it's quite high in the Mediterranean compared to global rates, and there's a bit of a question why, and she was explaining partly it's also to do with the, uh, the way the carbon is being measured. It's also capturing phytoplankton, and the reason there's more phytoplankton in some of these areas is eutrophication from human impacts. So there's this kind of mixed message of carbon that comes from two very different sources and how that plays out. Um, so that's quite hot, globally relevant research. And they also uh, had some surveys with stakeholders about the ranking of seagrasses. I had heard from a previous master's student that tourists and people thought the seagrasses were horrible, they just smelled, they were in the way when you circled, they had stinging things. But this is proving that they actually think seagrasses are very important for coastal protection, for biodiversity, and actually value them quite highly. So maybe there's been some kind of a, a shift in understanding of the benefits. And it's one of the, I think, more um, easier ecosystems to communicate the value of ecosystem services through. Um, Atado, the cork exemplar, which we've been to most of us at least once, if not twice. And they've done some very innovative work with stakeholder engagement, looking at straight recent challenges. And the thing that connects all of this is the drivers of change, because you've got this LATR, this long-term ecological experiment station, it's fairly bounded. And so you can really look at change over time, both on the ground and actually what the cork industry is doing, what's going on with the landscape, climate change. And they're also doing some more recent research on carbon stock, again, carbon from a very different source and situation, and the uh, carbon change over time, but also um, actual, I can't read it either, cattle, forest, but here is Invest in Tesla. So this is using different tools to kind of quantify and examine the carbon relationships within the Montado. On the lower Danube, we are really, really happy to have Rania and Yulia here from the Danube. Where are you? I want to make sure that everyone sees you. There they are, back there. So um, welcome them. This is the, really their first big meeting. I think Maya was here in the past, so they are our champions for the Danube. Um, and they've been doing some very, very interesting work on um, basically locally informed <coughs> economic valuation of the values of ecosystem services. And actually, in this case, it's the local flowing up into the national. So that's quite innovative in that regard, around the Porcinia Nature Park. So um, we're really pleased they're here, and that'll be a nice park. I think this might be the last one of these, the French Alps. And this one had quite a few slides, but the essence that I got from them was the idea of scenarios, using different ways of capturing people's values, views, both uh, social values as well as more mapping type of scenarios, and looking at change over time and different storylines that might come from those change use scenarios. So, um, is anyone here from the French shops? You are. There you are. So, your name? Kim. So, she can tell you more about that. And then, I think that's, that's it for our little snapshots from the field. And there are a few things going on that are kind of all exemplar processes. One of which is what Kim and Heather, Heather Schnauber, Heather, where are you? Here. She's new. So, that's her. And she's leading um, a process which will result in a paper. Uh, we hope, on um, insights from stakeholder engagement across the 12 uh, exemplars. So we intuitively think with as many exemplars in this diversity, there must be some pretty innovative insights buried in there somewhere, and uh, we're going to find them. And there's a range of research questions, and the idea is to have a short targeted uh, paper in Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment. It also serves as a milestone, very clever. Um, so we spent an afternoon yesterday <coughs> working on this, and I think from the discussions of yesterday, it's quite a rich which you needed to work with. Um, there are several questionnaires floating around in various forms, as I mentioned. So Heather and Kim have a survey that will help uh, kind of back, backstop and enrich in the paper I just mentioned. jean Bier in relation to the decision trees and lesson learns that uh, you'll be hearing more about. So she, many of us have already been participants in a survey uh, questionnaire process this morning. Um, so that's a work in action. And Sandra Lavarelle by email, Probably you might have gotten, uh, this is the Swiss Alps, I believe, um, uh, questions from her about exemplar trade-offs. So what's quite interesting, this is classic where we have one work package, say knowledge, needing the exemplars to answer and respond questions. And I put Claire down here for Aqua, because she may be, uh, I don't know if you have a questionnaire or not going around. No, I just need input. Huh? We, we've got a template that we'll get people to do. Okay, so but I, I heard she was in the mix of asking us something. So yeah, we're, we're going to tell her something. So her name's <laughs> up here, too. So just uh, be, be uh, participatory, be engaged, be your own stakeholder on this. 
And I won't go too into this too much. Uh, we obviously have our recording just like everyone else, but I think it's quite exciting because it does uh, bring together everything from how many meetings and workshops have you been to and where are all the receipts um, to what are the con convergent ideas and crystallization that are going on that you often don't see until you lay it out in a very organized way. So I'm a, a fan <coughs> of reporting and revealing synergy and function. And this is just the last thing. And just on the end, um, so the overall <coughs> piece of reporting will be Ariana and Jennifer, who I want to introduce. Where's Jennifer? There she is right there. So she's kind of our new complement with Ariane and fantastic. And she's worked on some EU projects before. So she's fitting right in. And the meta-analysis will be led by Sven, Karsten, the meta team, raise your hands. There's Sven, Karsten. And then the exemplars, we, uh, Kim and Heather are the lead on that, but we also divide it up between Ariane and myself and Kim in terms of different clusters, which you've heard about in synthesis, John, the other mark. So if anyone asks you, you know, have you been to conferences, have you been to talks, please engage and help. And uh, we're trying to get more and more of our stuff on the web, which we're a little behind up, but all these wonderful reports and papers and things will be on the web, web both for ourselves and the broader community. And that's just a thank you to everybody.